Hi everyone, this is Enderf. Uh, today I want to show you a bit of the progress that I've made on the first person shooter project. So I decided to go in a certain direction basically. Um, I continued a bit, uh, a bit to work on the FPS controller, not too much actually. I, ma I mainly decided to focus on a single weapon instead of having a full inventory and a bit of recoil, uh, the, the magazine, so reloading, um, certain things like that. Um, but it hasn't developed in, in you know in a in a huge way. Um, it's still similar to what you saw last time. What I've focused on, however, is implementing AI, which I want to show you immediately because I decided to take the, the the path of this project more towards building a demo scene, um, which will be playable, or at least that's my plan. Um, and um, in this demo scene, I'm I'm planning to to make you know like a, a first person shooter survival. Uh, horror uh, wave based um, with uh, most likely zombies uh, such as this one uh, this is an asset that I took uh, but uh, I, I essentially implemented the AI and the blood effect system which you will see right now so as you can see the AI is fully functional it's using a um, uh, root motion system so you can see that the feet uh, movement and the overall movement uh, of the AI is quite realistic uh, there is a good blending between uh, walking and, and running uh, it has four different attacks let's see if he actually plays them all well now he's always playing the same one for some reason always the same one great fantastic okay now he changed it well <clears throat> yeah there are like basically two different ones which are mirrored um, and it does not inflict any damage to me as of now, uh, to the player, but we can inflict damage to him. And as you can see, there are there is quite a nice blood splat effect. And he can even die. So we got blood decals on him, we got blood decals on the ground. Uh, some of them are repeated, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll vary them a bit more next time. They're kind of randomly picked, so uh, even if these are all the same for some reason. Uh, let me try again doing it to see if we get some more different blood splats. Yeah, so now we got a bit of a variation of blood splats. We already saw this one, but this one is relatively new. I think this is the same as that, right? Yeah. I don't know why it's always picking this one, but yeah. And this is also different. Um, as of now, I'm using a pooling system for the blood. I'm using a pooling system for the blood effects, um, which you can see probably on the left side. It's right here. Yeah. And after a couple of minutes, the blood disables simply because I'd like to implement more zombies have, uh, you know, as, as I told you before, um, waves of zombies uh, coming through. So uh, there will be a lot of blood. So I need to, I need to see if, uh, how much blood we can basically uh, support in game. Uh, so I, I want to leave it on for a while, but then eventually it will be disabled and pulled by the object pooler. Uh, after that, we can reuse it. The same will go for the um, uh, for the enemies. They'll stay so they'll, they'll stay for a while, and then they'll get disabled. Uh, as of now, they'll they'll just stay actually. Um, let's give you another demonstration. Uh, yeah, his his uh, his detection is also not optimal. It has to be improved, um, and his ragdoll effects are also not great. Um, and as of now, as you can see, the decals on the body quickly disappear, which is something I'm planning to fix because I want decals to remain on the body so that if you look if you look back at the um, that body, you will see. Um, you know, you, you'll see how you kill that guy uh, if you shot him in the ad and stuff like that. Uh, and as of now, we are actually inflicting always the same amount of damage irrespectively, irrespectively of what body part we're hitting. We got some sound effects also for the gun, for reloading, for shooting. Um, And I think I have to rescale the whole thing because as you can see now the zombie is quite short compared to me 
So I've got the gun in front of him. So if I pause the game, as you can see, I'm quite like I'm much taller than him, which is not supposed to be happening. Um, he, he actually he stays he's staying in a crawled position, as you can see. So it's that's not really helping. Um, but there is there is really as you can see there is really a, an issue in terms of scaling. So those scaling of the arms will have to be redone to to adapt it to the zombie because you can see there is like the gun is huge it's basically more than half of his body so that's not really yeah that's not really realistic um maybe you can notice it a bit less while you you know while you use the gun the, the arms in front of you but oh and it got glitched for some reason um yeah and the system is also using a a, re a reaction uh, in terms of in terms of physics in terms of bullet physics you could say so once the ray cast hits the body uh, if if the um, if the uh, zombie dies if the AI dies then uh, the ragdoll will activate and a force will be applied to it uh, basically in the in the opposite direction of where of the bullet well, of where the bullet hit in so it's kind of it's kind of yeah following uh, or trying to follow um, uh, momentum laws you know so once once you hit uh, something with a certain force in a certain direction it will um, it will maintain that momentum um, and this is pretty much it so we can walk on the corpse. This is it. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.